Hey, good morning, everyone. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. As you guys know, well, at least for you people that you know tune in regularly, I am not at my house, so this video will not be a near as um, crisp as it normally is. Um, but I'm here in Gatlinburg, and I thought I would make you guys a video because things do look pretty crazy for next week and even leading into the last couple of days in November into the first couple of days of December. So I hope you guys are doing well. I'm excited to join you guys uh, this morning. Not sure if I'll have a video, you know, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday. I will have a video Tuesday when I get home, but I want to jump on here, just make a video and uh, talk about some things because we are seeing some, uh, a lot of cold air that will most likely drop down to a low of 48 and it's starting to trend more towards the central to, to really the eastern U.S. And yes, this could mean a um a storm threat maybe an early season winter storm maybe multiple ones so we're going to go over some things and uh, break it down we're going to get just right into it we're not going to lead up into it like we normally do uh, but we're going to go over the gfs euro canadian model um, even show you some snowfall maps we're going to talk about temperatures compared to average and briefly describe the pattern okay we're not going to make this 30 minutes long like we normally do we're just going to kind of give you the cut and dry information. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if you're a first time viewer, you're wondering, man, this dude's um, system and setup is kind of janky. Well, I'm on vacation right now and I'm making this video out of Gatlinburg and uh, this is not my typical uh, YouTube setup. So let's get rocking and rolling. So we're going to start off by looking at the GFS. I know this is probably a little bit smaller on your screen than you guys are used to. This is the 06Z. So it's the latest GFS run that we have. I'm going to start off with the central U.S. and then we're going to go into the eastern U.S. So I'm going to get this moving here and we're going to start this all off for next, well this coming Tuesday now, Tuesday morning the 26th. So I'm going to get this in motion. What I want you to watch here is this energy here in the Rockies and the cold air is dropping down, right? And I'm not going to be able to draw on this like I normally can, but cold air is dropping down. Cold air is going to meet up a pretty, meet up into a pretty active storm track. And as we're moving forward here, we're getting into, well, this is Thanksgiving Eve, the evening of the 27th. We got moisture hanging out just south of that cold air. It's already cold enough for like Colorado and the Rockies and things like that. But you keep this going, the cold air continues to sink south pretty fast. This is suppressing that storm track pretty far south. So we're getting into the morning of Thanksgiving. I mean, it's showing a little bit of snow um, on this run of the GFS for um, the panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas, a little bit in New Mexico, and we keep this going. The cold air continues. The storm system moves into the eastern U.S. We'll talk about the eastern U.S. here in a second. And then even more cold air begins to drop down. And we're getting into Black Friday. We're getting into next weekend. And we have a lot of cold air in the middle of the country. Not, not as much down in Texas and Oklahoma, maybe. We had a good bit of cold air. Um, with some light to moderate moisture riding into that cold air, we're going to get snow. I mean, this is showing snow next Saturday, and this is about a week from today. So this is going to switch up a little bit. We're showing snow over the Midwest. Didn't mean to push that button. And, uh, man, we were rolling there for about five minutes, but we're going to keep going. And then we're moving into the Midwest here. Look, it shows the snow moving into Iowa. So is the snow moving into the Midwest. And we keep this going. We go all the way to the morning. Uh, in the afternoon of the 1st of December. And um, we're getting pretty far out, but I'll continue. I'll go about 10 days out. And we're, that's about as far as we're going to keep it most likely. Um, and uh, we take it into the first couple days of December. And I know it doesn't look like much, guys, on this run. I know you're thinking, well, I don't, I'm not looking at a whole lot here. Well, you see these blue lines here, this one here, this one here, this one here. And, and I know it, this video is only coming up in 720, so it's probably not it's clear for you uh, normal viewers as you guys are used to. Normally our videos are in 1080, but uh, this is so much cold air is actually suppressing the moisture to the south. In fact, if we keep it going a little bit past day 10, you're actually going to see a wintry mix break out. And this is not a forecast, guys, but it's going to a wintry mix breaks out like the 3rd, the 4th, and 5th of December across southern sections of uh, Mississippi getting into Alabama. And it's pretty wild because, I mean, this is the first couple of days of December. Typically, we don't have that much cold air dropping now. And then that's about as far out as we'll take it. Okay. Now, let's kind of back this up and let's look at the eastern U.S. Okay. We're, we're going to start this off for, let's just go all the way to Tuesday. There is a storm system flying. It's more so taking a route. Not a lot of cold air. It's really bogging down this storm track yet. But there, there's a lot of winter weather up here in Canada. 
right here. A lot of just more so rain down here in the northeast. I don't, I don't. This first system that kind of initiates the pattern, I think, is going to be more so a lot of moisture for the northeast. And then we start to get into Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening. Cold front kind of moves through. This could crank up the lake effect snows, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario that cold air riding over the Great Lakes. Is this going to be a significant lake effect snow event? I don't think so, but it could definitely get it going. And then the cold air kind of goes zonal. I mean, this is getting into the Thanksgiving Eve, right? Here comes that system we've been watching for quite some time. I mean, the last few to several days. This has been a storm system that's teased at ideas for a winter storm across the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Well, the storm is still there. It's all rain for the Deep South. But you keep this going, and we're getting into Thanksgiving, Look at the snow showing up for PA. Look at the snow showing up for um, close to New York City, northern New Jersey. By the way, this area right in here got a ton of snow with this last winter storm. I mean, it ended up overachieving big time. I saw someone where someone got 20 inches of snow in the higher elevations of northern New Jersey. But you see this system, it's kind of cutting across the southeast. That could bring some severe weather. And then we get into Thanksgiving night into Black Friday morning, the GFS showing snow across I mean as far south as the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina look at the snow across West Virginia and Virginia look at the snow breaking out across southern New England a show shows an impactful winter storm just after Thanksgiving and it really cranks up for you know the what is it called um, the uh, down east areas of Maine into Canada. We certainly got to watch Canada in this pattern as we have blocking to the north. And then the cold air, once again, crashes over those Great Lakes as we're getting into next weekend. That'll crank up the lake effect snow. And then we're getting into the first couple of days in November, and there's a lot of cold air. We're going to talk more about this here in a second. A lot of cold air diving down all the way down to the southeast. You see that 540 line. And, man, you want to talk about a chilly first couple days of December. Pretty wild stuff. And there's that suppressed storm track down here. I mean, it, it the cold air is coming down so aggressively that it is suppressing the moisture. That's pretty wild stuff for, for this time of the year, if this is what actually, actually ends up happening. And then, you know, it gets crazy after that. So if we kind of switch back to the central U.S., break down to Europe for the central and we're not going to go spend as much time on this as we did the GFS just because this video will end up going 30 minutes long, and we don't want that. Uh, but, you know, middle of the country for the European, and this is Thanksgiving Eve. We got some snow breaking out across the Midwest. This is for the 27th, and uh, we keep going. Here comes the cold air dropping down, even on the more conservative Euro. doesn't show anything impactful for actually Thanksgiving except some light snow. It does show for the eastern U.S. a storm system, though, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Cold air dives down into next weekend. Look at that light snow breaking out across a pretty large area the last day of November across the Midwest and the upper Midwest. And then that's when it gets weird as we're getting into the first couple days in November. Look at all the moisture down here with a lot of cold air diving down, showing snow for areas of northern Arkansas. And then it ends up developing into a pretty wild scenario, potential scenario, not a forecast for the eastern U.S. So the central U.S., not that crazy, okay? But the eastern U.S., Let's back this up. Let's go to the eastern uh, section here. And this is going to, no, we're good here. So let's go all the way to Tuesday. Here comes that first system before Thanksgiving, mostly a rainmaker for everybody. And then we get into the, the day before Thanksgiving, and we get into Thanksgiving morning. The Euro showing a, a little bit more of a colder scenario compared to the GFS. So we got snow breaking out, you know, across areas of the Ohio Valley rain, you know, a little bit further south for sure, mid, mid south, Ohio Valley, southern sections of the Ohio Valley. And then look, I mean, as we're getting into Thanksgiving night, we're getting into the morning of um, uh, Black Friday, the, the day after Thanksgiving. You know, I, a lot of people still call it Black Friday, but um, we're getting into the morning of the 29th. So six days from now, and this is a powerful storm system for the Northeast. It could mean severe weather to the south. Look at this major winter storm cranking up. I-95 corridor, we don't know the details of this. We just know that's a that's a big storm uh, signal. For right around and just after, maybe just before Thanksgiving, timing could speed up. And then look at this big winter storm Friday night, next Friday night, cranking up across New England. And then cold air continues to dive down. And then look at this system that comes behind it. More cold air in the picture. Remember the GFS flirting around with the same time frame also, folks. With a lot of cold air coming down, a storm system, this is not this Monday, but next Monday, the, the first Monday of December, 
showing winter weather pretty far south pretty wild stuff guys and then you know the pattern gets kind of just weird after that now the canadian let's just take more of a wide look at this instead of breaking it down section by section but the canadian model i know this is probably pretty small canadian model you know we're getting into thanksgiving there's your storm system right here suppressed more on both the other models if it would come north that would be a winter storm for the northeastern areas of the mid-atlantic and then Where's that storm signal kind of at the first or second day of December? Well, that it's there. there. There's energy right here. You see right here, there's there's energy. There's a lot of cold air diving down, but it's not meeting up because there's so much cold air suppressing your energy and keeping it into the Gulf of Mexico. So, um, no, let's keep this. I'm not going to mess anything up. We did. We had such a good, oh, no, we're still good. We're good. So let's look at the Euro Ensemble, guys. And, and, and this is just between now and, and day 10. Th there is a snow signal. It just takes us all the way out to about the 30 December. There's a snow signal across the middle of the country. It's not a signal for a very significant storm, unless you're in the Rockies. It, it looks pretty significant here. But um, anywhere else, it, it does not. But, you know, the signal starts to increase once you get into the Midwest, Okay. And uh, it's really once you switch it to the eastern U.S. Okay, look, look at that signal right here across New England, the northeast, and the mid-Atlantic, even all the way down to the mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee. That is a pretty strong signal in the, between now and day 10, which this is for next week. I mean, this is all, like, for example, I'm going to get this in motion for you folks. Like, this is just through this coming Wednesday, but watch as we get into Thanksgiving. We start to get past Thanksgiving and the weekend after, and you see how the, the signal really increases for the Northeast. And if we do extend it past that time frame, it, I mean, this is like 350 hours out, 366 hours out. You see how it increases down further south? Certainly something to watch. And um, let's make sure that our thing is show. We're good here. But we keep going here. Now, this is for the Euro Ensemble. It looks just like the GFS Ensemble, right? Very light signal across the middle of the country, stronger signal across the Rockies. And then it starts to increase once you get into the Midwest. The upper Midwest, a lot of snow showing up. This is probably enhanced off uh, the Great Lakes, um, lake effect snow. And then we look at the eastern U.S. And let's back it up. Let's kind of go through motion here. You see that signal across West Virginia. That That's... The blizzard that they, that they actually got issued blizzard warnings uh, right now so ignore that watch how it feels in for the northeast as we start to get you know around thanksgiving and just after that is a strong snow signal so it's going to turn winter if it hasn't already really fast in these areas and then we take this signal beyond that beyond day 10 and it does start to kind of creep south here so you know speaking on temperatures here all right and we're going to start this off for thanksgiving morning it looks pretty cold for Thanksgiving um, over the middle of the country. The deep south, it, it looks like the cold front is moving in around Thanksgiving. Below average temperatures, let's just focus on the blue. The greens is like 10 to 15 degrees below average. The blues maybe anywhere from five to 10. But if we keep this going here, watch how the cold air takes over the central US first. And then we start to get into next weekend, the cold really starts to take over the Eastern US. And then by the time we're at day 10 folks, I mean, it, it, it is not just below average temperature wise. It is well below average. Um, pretty wild start to winter is looking like it's going to unfold for us. And I mean, the Euro Ensemble, pretty much the same way. Cold takes over the country even faster. By the time we're into next Friday and a Saturday, I mean, it, it's a pretty frigid look. We have not seen something like this the beginning of winter in quite some time. Um, but man, it lingers and lingers and lingers for a while. And you know, the, the kind of the nerding out portion of the video, which you know, I'm not going to spend you know 10 minutes on this, but the blue is lower pressure. The um, reds and the oranges, that's higher pressure. You know, the blues that you're seeing on your screen, a lot of energy, probably cold air in this case, absolutely. And what I want you to watch for is we're getting into next weekend. Look at this huge dip in the trough across the central and eastern U.S. And look how far it digs. To me, and especially as this extends out like that, blocking around, okay, around Greenland, negative NAO, still a spiking of the ridge across the western U.S. up to Alaska. To me, that screams a storm track that's going to, and I don't have anything to draw on this right now, dives down here, comes down here, and man, there's going to be cold air here. I'm telling you, we're, we're going to get some wild stuff 
it's it's a it's an exciting pattern if you're a winter weather fan. If not, then it's not. But it, it's a pretty wild looking pattern, folks. It really is. And and I'm gonna kind of pull this up on your on the fly here, and I'm using my wife's laptop, so I don't have my stuff um, you know saved into here. But you know if we look at the six to ten day temperature outlook, the 28th to the second of December, well below average. Temperatures predicted over the middle of the country, but I mean it's over almost the entire country, all right. And and then you know you look at the precipitation outlook with that above average precipitation right in here, mixed with the chance of below average temperatures. And then I mean you even look, folks, you look at the eight to fourteen day outlook, below average temperatures looking like them. So this is a pretty wild pattern, folks. Um, that's all I got. Appreciate y'all's patience working through that. But uh, I definitely just want to kind of keep you guys updated because the pattern ahead looks um, looks pretty wild. It, it really does. So that's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll try to get you another video sometime over the weekend. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Have a good weekend. And uh, talk to you soon.